For a bit of backstory, I work the graveyard shift in the North Carolina mountains. Working these dark hours kind of leaves limited things to occupy my time on my days off. Normally, I just go out driving or hiking in the dark if I don't have a video game I want to play or movie I want to watch. With this hobby, I often come across unusual things in the darkness. I've experienced things I can't forget, or hear things when I'm alone that make me want to faint. They all range from normal scary to downright terrifying, like this story. This happened about two weeks ago. It was my night off. I was getting kind of bored with playing around watching YouTube. So like most weekends, now that it's getting warmer, I decided to go out for a drive. It's about 1am, so I head up to the parkway like normal. It's bound to be a beautiful drive. Nope, it's closed. Well, where do I go now? The Piscot Forest. I haven't been there since high school. Perfect, an adventure. And off I drive. It's about 3am by the time I get to the entrance of the forest. It's already looking pretty foreboding. The entrance is smack in the middle of a tubing, ice cream, and souvenir haven. All brightly lit parking lots and cute signs. But the entrance is completely the opposite. It's a long straight road with absolutely no lights, disappearing into the night. Only campers go up there after dark. I don't think much of it. It's nighttime. Of course it looks pretty scary. Everything looks scary in the dark. And up I drive. Everything is normal for a while. I pass by turnoffs for picnics and campgrounds, all dark. But the higher I climb up the mountain, the more anxious I feel. Something isn't right. I'm normally fine in the night, it's my time, but something just feels off. I keep on pushing, the winding road climbs higher and higher, the forest is all around me, thick and serene, the air is warm and smells so good and misty. The only light around is from my headlights, but I can't shake the bad feeling. I try to ignore it, thinking maybe it's because I can't see the moon, like when I go on the parkway. Yeah, that's it, it's gotta be. But as the climb gets steeper, the more scared I get. My chest is tight and becoming painful, but I keep going on, just trying to ignore it. I'm passing the waterfalls, hearing the water roaring out of sight. I should be relaxing, but I can't. After about an hour and a half, I notice the turnoffs are few and far between. I haven't passed any in a while. The pain in my chest is alarming me, and I'm considering heading back down. Suddenly, I smell something unusual. You ever remember being little and your parents having that particular smell that you remember? Like a perfume or a cologne they might wear that you immediately recognize into your adult years as them. Well, my dad was a factory worker and a smoker. So from a young age, he always smelled of motor oil, harsh metal, coffee, and cigarettes. An odd combination, but it's him. And that's the smell I smelled. In the middle of the woods, with nothing but trees and clean air around, I smell my dad. It was subtle, but I got the hint. I need to turn around and go home now. I drove onwards till I found a safe place I could do a K-turn. Around a tight turn I found a good spot away from the guardrails and initiate the maneuver. Right as I got my car straightened back out, I stopped dead. The smell of rot had flooded through my open window, and there, inches from my front bumper, was a creature. It was crouched down looking at the dirt. The body. It wasn't right. It looked like a big hairy dog, crouching on all fours. But the legs, they were too long to be a normal dog. My eyes moved up to its oddly human-like head. Long dark hair covering a face I couldn't see. But it's the eyes. I could see them, and they met mine. A reddish-orange glowing back at me. I hadn't been this scared in my whole life. My heart felt like it was going to stop, and tears started filling my eyes, and the horrible smell was suffocating. The creature started to move, and I don't remember what happened. It was like my body flipped a switch. I wasn't thinking anymore. I didn't feel anything. I just stopped on the gas pedal, veered around the creature, and sped off down the mountain. I feel like I should have clipped it with my car. It was so close, but I don't remember recognizing that I connected with it. I don't remember anything up until my phone rang, long after I left the forest. It was my twin. She felt like something was wrong and had been trying to get a hold of me for half an hour. I drove to her house and explained the whole thing, 
waiting for the sun to come up. This has to be one of the most terrifying experiences that happened to me. And every time I tell someone about it, something unexplainable happens. When I told my twin sister, that night she heard some banging on her closet, with no one or nothing inside. When I told my parents, my mother saw some red eyes in the woods when she went out to smoke. When I told my roommate the next evening, we both heard a crash outside, but when we looked, there was nothing. Then when I was leaning beside the window, I saw the curtain move in one spot. I felt a breath behind me. I flipped and hid on the other side of the room till morning. I don't know if it's the same creature, and it somehow followed me across counties, or something else. I still go out driving at night, and it's actually my night off, but I think I'll just stay at home tonight, play it safe. When I was in high school, I played on the basketball team and ran track. To keep my cardio up, I used to run this 11 kilometer hiking trail that went through the hills right outside of my town. It was a small town. It was safe for the most part, and everybody knew each other. I wouldn't call this trail remote, because at certain points, you'd pass a dog park, train tracks, and one stretch of it ran alongside the highway, but some parts were pretty deep into the woods. There was an option to do a 4 kilometer loop inside of this 11 kilometer trail, and people traveled this route much more often. I hardly ran into anybody on the longer trail. I ran this same trail for three years, and nothing strange ever happened, until this one day. It started off as it normally did. I parked my car on the dirt road that came off the highway, and set up my playlist on my phone. I put my earphones in, popped a piece of gum in my mouth, and began walking towards the trail. The only thing I took with me on my runs were my phone, earphones, and a single car key wrapped around my finger. I don't recall seeing anybody on the trail that day. It was in the afternoon, and it wasn't abnormal for the trail to be less busy than it would have been during the evening. I walked for a few minutes while I was still on the crushed stone path. Dirt and mud with large tree roots reaching across it in all directions. I liked this trail because I had to focus on where my feet were landing with every step, so I was less focused on how much energy I was exerting. I was about halfway through the loop, and this was really the most remote part of it. It was all forest, and there were a lot of hills and dips in the path, and big boulders all around you. I didn't see or hear anything odd, but out of nowhere, I had this extreme sense of dread come over me. I kept running, didn't really react. Once I reached a more flat part of the trail, just a few feet ahead, I took my earphones out while keeping the same running pace. I noticed it was eerily silent but I didn't realize that meant there's likely some sort of predator in the area. The only wildlife predators that would have been around me would have been a coyote, maybe a bear, but this would be very unlikely as there are never bear sightings anywhere near the town. I slowed my jog to a walk because the trail got steep, and I had to walk over knee-high rocks, but I was still moving fast because I felt like something was behind me. For some reason, this next part is very hard to remember. Just this slice of about 30 seconds feels almost like I'm trying to recall a dream, but I saw something in the trees. When I try to remember, I can't fully picture it, almost like looking at a blurry image. It wasn't an animal, it was a person. I can't explain it, but I could clearly sense that it was a man. I pretended not to see the figure in the trees. I remember doing this so they wouldn't know that I was aware of them. It felt subconscious automatic and 100% instinctive. Now, the figure wasn't behind me in the way that it felt when I first sensed a presence. It was in front of me, but on the side. My two o'clock to be exact. It didn't move as I walked by. The person just stood there, completely still, and watched me pass. Once I got up around the turn, probably 15 feet ahead, I ran so fast it was like my feet were gonna detach from my body. Adrenaline was carrying me out of there at a speed that was faster than I've ever moved in my life. I didn't hear footsteps, but it felt like they were right behind me, as if I would feel two hands reach out and grab me at any moment. Primal fear. I didn't stop running until I was out of the trees and could see my car. This may feel anticlimactic, but nothing happened, and when I looked back after leaving the trees, there was nobody there. My adrenaline was flooding the entire time but the deep sense of dread left a couple of minutes after it arrived. I just knew I couldn't stop running until I was out. I think somebody was coming after me, 
because they saw a five-foot young girl running alone in the woods. Maybe they were waiting for somebody to pass by, but I have a gut feeling that they were out there for some other reason, and I happened to walk by at the wrong time. I did run this trail four times a week for three years. Nothing like this ever happened to me before or after this run. Although I did switch trails after two or three more visits, I didn't feel the sense of dread that I felt that day, but I couldn't shake the feeling that it might happen again. Sometimes I wonder if something would have happened to me if I kept running there. I don't live there anymore, I haven't for a while, and I haven't heard of anything bad happening there, but someone was in the woods that day, and they did not have good intentions. It was a fall afternoon. That year my husband and I had just started hiking. We decided to try out a new trail that day. We drove about an hour and a half from our house to a hiking forest. It was raining that day, and not raining hard, just a light misty drizzle with a lot of fog. As we approached the trail we saw nothing but trees. We were really in the middle of nowhere. When we pulled up to the little dirt parking lot, there were no other cars, except one. An old car filled with stuff inside of it covering the windows, and an old man sitting in the front seat. We didn't think much of it, and we went ahead and signed into the sign-in book next to the map. For those of you who aren't familiar with hiking trails, they'll usually have a book at the beginning of a trail where you can sign in. At the end of the day, the park rangers come around and check the book. If you haven't signed out, they'll send a search party. Anyways, so we start our hike. It was so misty and rainy, it felt like a movie. Naturally, it was super wet and muddy, and there were frogs and snails everywhere. The trail started out somewhat in the open, with a few trees here and there, then suddenly transitioned into a deep, dark, rich green forest. The sky was completely covered, aside from a few openings. We arrive at the end of the path, which came to a huge lake. We turned around to head back, but before we started, we saw a huge claw mark on a tree, and then we saw a huge paw print. We joked about the possibility of there being a bear nearby, and started talking about how we would defend ourselves. We eventually made it back to the parking lot. The old man was gone by now, and there was a note pinned on the map. A chill went down my spine as I read it. Bear seen by lake at 7pm. The exact same time we were at the lake. So jokes ever made about defending ourselves from a bear might have become a reality if we just stayed a little bit longer. I get chills thinking about what would have happened if we were face to face with a bear in the middle of nowhere, and now we make sure to read all the signs before hiking.